Free diving is an underwater activity giving a lot of fun and freedom. Like in life, to be free, you need to give up on certain things. In case of free diving, you give up on breathing. You relax, hold your breath, and go underwater. By leaving tank with compressed air on the surface, you become agile and silent. You can feel like an aquatic creature. For most, free diving is about exploring underwater world and playing with the nature. For some, it is a way of self-development or even a way to fight certain medical conditions. Unfortunately for some, it was the last thing they did in their lives. They died as a result of lack of precaution, safety procedures or unfortunate turns of events. But like if diving and staying underwater and playing with dolphins was not enough, some people ask themselves, how deep can I really go? Last 40 years give us a very good track record of their achievements. When you go deep, your reality becomes more like this. You dive along a vertical line which defines the quickest way for you to, from the surface down to the deepest point and back to the surface. You hook yourself to this line with a piece of metal rope, a lanyard terminated with a carabinet. Current world record in diving in this discipline with a monofin that you can see in the picture is 129 meters. To put this into perspective, it is the height of a London eye. Just to stand on top of it, for most, would be terrifying. But in case of freediving, there are no shortcuts. If you made it all the way down, you have to make it all the way up to the surface. Depth is one thing, time is another. It takes in excess of four minutes of breath hold to go this deep. And we are not talking about sitting on a couch, relaxing. We are talking about active swimming through the water column. The pressure at that depth is so tremendous that it squeezes your lungs from several liters in capacity down to the size of an apple. If you haven't exercised your chest flexibility well enough, your lungs would most, like, most likely be damaged. Like if that was not enough, nitrogen, gas which is uh, inert in atmospheric pressure, at depth start acting on you like alcohol, impeding your decisions and slowing down reactions. You can easily say it's a hell of a journey for an athlete, but it's not only a journey for him or her. For safety team and spectators on the surface, it is literally a journey into the unknown. When the visibility is good underwater, you can follow a diver down to 30, 40 meters. Any deeper dive and you need to start relying on a sonar, which in a form of dozens of pixels on a tiny screen, gives you the readings of the current depth of the athlete. But sometimes due to technical issues or wrong setup, the sonar doesn't work. Then you can hear the operator saying, signal lost. And from this point onward, you start relying on a very simple principle, a sense of touch. Imagine you are a judge sitting this deep in water, holding the line and trying to tell from a gentle vibration of the line if the athlete is still going down or if he already made, uh, starts his ascent. With each of the steps, we move away from facts and start relying on assumptions. And that's fine as long as everything goes according to the plan. But uh, as we know from the history, things not always go this way. There have been cases reported by athletes of them getting entangled at depth with the lanyard or encountering loose lines or fishing nets at depth. For safety team, this is not an ideal situation. They have a hard task at their hands. On one hand, they want to react as early as they can to minimize the risk of health issues for the athlete. On the other hand, they cannot react too early not to jeopardize the attempt, which might still be going fine according to the plan. In either way, it is very easy to lose pressure, precious, precious seconds. This used to be a reality of professional performance-oriented freediving, but this is about to change. Together with our team, we created this technology, which allows to follow a diver down, all the way down and up, and which looks like this in the environment. What used to be a dozen of pixels on a tiny screen of the sonar or a gentle vibration of the line, now becomes a full high-definition video of the athlete taken all the way across the dive. People say a photo is a thousand words. What I would like to show you today is a video. Video of a uh, multiple world record holder, William Trowbridge, going down to 114 meters in a discipline called free immersion, when the athlete is allowed to pull himself down the line and up the line. When you go deep, you really value your last breath. You not only take as much 
air into your lungs as you can, but you also use a special technique called packing when you pump extra seeps of air into your lungs. At the same time, you try to stay relaxed as long as you can to keep the heart rate low and minimize the oxygen consumption. The first meters are a bit hard because your lungs are fully expanded, giving you a lot of positive buoyancy, bringing you up to the surface. You need to actively fight against that. But with each meter, this becomes easier and easier. As the lungs compress, somewhere around 20, 25th meter, you reach a point of negative buoyancy. And from this point onward, you don't have to do anything. You just sink into the ocean. This is the ultimate sensation, something that is the most pleasurable feeling for the divers. It's called a free fall. To keep in this phase for as long as you can, you set up an audio alarm in your diving computer, which goes off just a couple of meters before the turn. And this reminds you to sort of awake and make a turn, which you will see in a second. After the turn, a hard part starts. What used to be a hundred of meters of free fall down now becomes a hundred of meters of active climbing along the line, fighting against negative buoyancy, against hydrodynamic drag, and against fear. Things get a little bit easier closer to the surface. You know you are safe, surrounded by safety team. They will bring you to the surface if the situation requires that. But at the same time, you start feeling burning sensation in your muscles. They have been working for a very long time without sufficient amount of oxygen. Just a couple of meters give you slight relief because your, the air in your lungs re-expands and helps you get to the surface with less effort. Upon surfacing, you got two tasks. One thing is to oxidize your blood as quickly, as, as efficiently as you can, not to lose consciousness, not to black out. The second thing is to keep your mouth above the water level to prove to the judges that you are in full control. If you don't do that, you're disqualified. This is professional performance-oriented freediving. Sport I had only a slight idea about a couple of years ago, and something I dove into completely. Since I remember, I enjoyed water. I love the freedom of motion it has to offer. The thing that supplemented my love for underwater world and allowed me to go, go deeper in this exploration was my professional life. I studied underwater uh, robotics and worked on a, as an engineer in this field. We were designing vehicles that were going uh, several kilometers below water level. But it, it, was, it was really interesting and it was rewarding. But then a completely different inspiration came. It happened during my trip to Thailand. As always, freediving was on my list of things to do, but this time was about to be different. I tried professional freediving for the first time, and I attended the professional freediving course. And this made me realize two things. First, I became more aware of risks associated with freediving and how to minimize them. And if anybody of you would like to try it, I strongly recommend to seek professional uh, training. The second thing was that for the first time in my life, I experienced professional setup with the lanyard strapped to my rest, wrist, with me diving along the line and trying to achieve the target depth which I announced just a moment earlier. And this new experience, completely new to me, put my mind on a different track. I started wondering what it must feel like for a real champion to go 100 meters below the sea level. How does it look like? What does he feel? And how do you show it? I started digging and it's quickly re I quickly realized that there seems to be no technology that, al that would allow to film this kind of journey. All I wanted to do was to go back home as quickly as possible, put my hands on my laptop with all the engineering tools I had, and start designing. When I got back home, I contacted people I knew could help. With some of them, we've been working on different projects in the past. With some, we've been waiting for the right moment. And here it was. We had an idea, we had a team of passionate people, and we wanted to make something completely new. <laughs> Around one year later, we were ready for testing. We wanted to see if long hours we put in the development brought us to the right result. At that time, our new friends from Polish Freediving Association were organizing a depth competition in Lake Hansa, the deepest lake in Poland. Conditions there were tough, both for freedivers and for equipment. Water was cold and murky. 20 meters below the water level, it was pitch black. We are worried if things will go according to the plan. But luckily, what freedivers told us was that being aware that somebody is accompanying them, that they have a 
companion that somebody's watching they, they, them throughout the dive, made them feel safer, help them overcome fear. And this was something really re rewarding, something we've been waiting for a long time. We knew from the very beginning that our project is a global worldwide project, but we didn't expect it to happen so quickly. Soon after Hancha, we got invitation to a world championship in Turkey. I remember the organizer and freediving federation were hungry for increased safety, hungry to be able to share with the rest of the world what is going to happen during this most prestigious event of the year. And so we met their expectations. It was the first event of its kind, broadcasted live and watched by hundreds of thousands of people around the world through the internet. Like if Turkey was not far enough, in 2017, World Championship took place in very beautiful but remote, remote island of Roatan in Honduras in Central America. Like usually during championship, athletes really try their best and push their limits. This usually means that safety team is, um, has, has a lot of things to do and has a lot of work to do. And that was also the case in this uh, event. Their intervention was required multiple times, but what made a huge difference was that each intervention was now recorded and could be analyzed to improve and to not make the same mistakes again and again. Not all experiences we had were pleasant. We have situations when we were reminded that we need to keep on improving. And one of them is this very particular dive. In this video, you can see Goran Chola going down to 130 meters. And what starts to appear in the background is the worst nightmare for all freedivers. A ghost line. It is a loose line hanging in the water volume and drifting together with the current. This particular one was several centimeters in diameter and had a braking strength of several tons. If it got entangled in Goran's lanyard, things could go really bad. I was piloting the drone at that time and I remember I could do nothing but to watch the drama happening in front of my eyes. Actually, there was nobody on the competition side that could do anything to signal to Goran to abandon his attempt. Luckily, the dive went safe and Goran returned to the surface. He wasn't even aware of the risk that he just encountered. The organizer postponed the competition for one hour until the problem was resolved. But who knows what would happen if not for the live video that was available on the surface. Most likely, the competition would have continued and more artists would be put at risk. We are also working now on an integration of a buzzer on the drone that could emit an audio sound in similar cases so that the safety team can give the athlete the signal to abandon his attempt if the situation requires that. There is one common thing about the locations I have mentioned. They are all quite remote. Together with the fact that most of the action takes place deep underwater, it means that it is very hard to share the sport and passion of many of their friends. Actually, if you are a freediver, you know that you can only speak about this topic with a tiny group of your friends. But this is changing, and it's changing fast. And here is a good example. On the left-hand side, you can see Jennifer Wedland going down to 82 meters and setting a national record for Germany in Honduras in Central America. On the right-hand side, you can see her twin sister wedding party with all 90 guests who, for the first time in their life, came into contact with freediving. They were watching live stream. From what Jennifer told us, they were all stunned by what they saw. Actually, the very fact that we don't have a photo of the very moment of the screening is a good proof that even photographers were so engaged in watching. To practice freediving, you don't have to go deep. Actually, the shallower you go, the more colorful your experiences will be. I really strongly recommend you to try this activity and sport. As some of community members recently described, the technology we have created is a ticket for the sport to the next level. Indeed, it offers unparalleled level of situational awareness for the judges and safety team and for the uh, viewers and spectators around the world. I really hope that uh, we can have our contribution in the development of the sport and sharing it with, with the world and making it more understood. Who knows, maybe in 2024, freediving will be in Paris Olympics.